So this issue of what's real and what's smoke may be a useful way of starting to frame our thinking. So let me now turn to our panel and ask how each of you and your organizations are thinking about that issue. What do you think is real and what do you dismiss as hype? Lee, why don't you take the first shot at that? Sure. So in the investment bank CTO office at Barclays, we've been exploring blockchain related propositions for about a year and a half so far. We've done this in quite a bit of depth. And one of the things we've been focusing on is exactly the title of this panel, separating the hype from the reality. Effectively, we're looking to cut through and find the business benefit underneath. So I'll share some thoughts in this space. So my view is, yes, there is a hype storm, a perfect hype storm, but we're very encouraged of being part of that and encouraging the organizations to develop their technologies to adjust and adapt so they much more closely fit investment banking needs. And in this case, this also covers the market infrastructure incumbents. It's the whole ecosystem to work together. Uh, DTCC has been looking at this not quite as long as, as Lee's team, uh, but over the last year, we've uh, been exploring the technology, uh, speaking to many of you, speaking to many uh, vendors, third-party providers, industry associations, many experts, uh, and, and we've determined a couple of different things um, peering through, through the hype and, and smoke. Um, first, uh, there's the ability to share information and let information flow is very powerful. Uh, the role that we play and certain infrastructures play uh, requires many firms across the industry to adhere to sets of standards, to upgrade versions of standards, uh, and, and it's, it's hard to get everyone on the same set of standards. It's hard to get everybody to look at data the same way, to interpret business rules the same way, uh, and if you can eliminate a whole layer of requirements, if you can eliminate the requirement that every body in the industry use the same exact database and the same exact version and the same exact business rules and the same exact stored procedures, if instead there's this new layer of technology that has the business rules embedded and that has the data information embedded and everyone is looking at that data in the same way, how powerful would that be and how much simpler can it be to roll out a technology and roll out processing and eliminate the many upgrades and many coordinations that are necessary. Uh, I have a list of, of uh, I'll say, hype comments, and I'll just give you a few of them. Um, reconciliation goes away. Uh, I think that's a myth. Uh, no matter how you slice it, there are other systems, whether they're big data systems, uh, whether they're your trading systems, whether it's end ledgers. There will always be reconciliation to get things on the ledger and to get things off the ledger. Um, that T0 uh, or immediate settlement is the ultimate benefit of this technology. There are some use cases that, that imply that uh, instant, uh, near real-time settlement can occur. Is that always desirable? It probably depends on the business case. The idea that you can share information, I think, is the ultimate value. And that sometimes gets lost uh, in the hype about the, the one implementation uh, of the technology that's existed for seven years, Bitcoin, where near real-time settlement has been one of its benefits. That may not apply in all <laughs> cases, and there are many use cases where information sharing is perhaps of more value than real-time settlement. Uh, that the ledger of transactions can provide all computing solutions that a company needs. That you could turn off all your other systems because the ledger is here. Uh, that's completely untrue. There are plenty of systems you have before the ledger, after the ledger, uh, creating reports, creating big data uh, that this technology just does not do. Uh, what's sometimes uh, fundamentally lost in the conversation is that this technology is just a ledger of transactions. Uh, that everyone really wants every transaction they do to be public. That every transaction they do in any manner they want to be put into public on a ledger. Uh, and that finally that a public untrusted network is always inevitably a better choice than a private one based on trust. Uh, I think there are cases and use cases and business opportunities uh, for, for both of these to coexist, uh, but I don't think there's ever one size fits all. Broadly, we're calling this the blockchain um, symposium, but blockchain distributed ledgers, shared ledgers are used 
uh, interchangeably. I think there's been enough work and an experimentation done that we can feel very confident that um, tamper-resistant, cryptographically secure financial data in the cloud and adding some software layers and some, some we like to call them smart contracts or self-executing contracts that sit on top of that can really change the way transactions are processed for financial institutions. So we've done a, a tremendous amount of experimentation uh, and realize that uh, experimentation by yourself and something that, that requires a community is, uh, produces limited results. So um, I guess uh, to, to, to finish, I think that um, if we look at tamper-resistant, cryptographically secured data in the cloud and we combine cloud computing, big data, and, and smart contracts, and we just start that broadly, we're a bunch of smart people and we can build some really unique solutions that can, that can make our business a lot more efficient going forward. But everybody here, I think, have pr proof of concept within and across firms, but it's too important to be left to IT alone. It's too important to be left to regulators alone. It's too important to be left to business people alone. I think there is a need for taking time and experimenting, because you will not get it right at first, to have the, the right architecture for the industry. Um, so that's to me very important in that architecture is the governance, the, the business model and who has access to what. The second one, as I think it was mentioned, is the trust. Uh, here we're not talking about a, a trustless environment like you, you would have for Bitcoin. It's, I think, a, an ecosystem of people who used to do business with each other for the last 40, 50 years. So that, but that trust needs to be there, and, and that trust needs to be operated by people who gain the trust of the industry by doing what they have been doing for ages. That be the TCC or CLS or SWIFT or, or other companies. You can argue that smart contract is still, for some aspect, relatively new and immature, but it's a great technology. Uh, I think for industry scalability, four things are required. Getting people together, and that's what some of you here on the panel and in the room do. Standardize the data and the processes, taking into account that it's end-to-end. -end. It's not only distributed ledger, it's end-to-end, -end, working with legacy system. Integrate, make sure you have systems that talk D DLT, that those systems are API towards legacy system. And then the trust, the business model, the governance to operate this, this, this user group, I think, is, is key for adoption.